Hello everybody, I am Developer Relations Engineer David Jones Gilardi, and I'd like to show you a very simple case of how you can have a conversation with a document or documents when using Langflow. So let's go ahead and take a look at the setup here on the left hand side of the screen. I have this file upload utility that I built. I'll include the link in the description for all of you to use. Um, you don't have to use this if you don't want to um, upload files into chat with Langflow and such, but I built this just to make it a lot easier to put everything together. And on the right side, I have a simple flow that combines both file upload and the ability to chat that is then funneled into your uh, to an LLM or to an agent like you see in this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to upload a file and then we're going to just ask, you know, we're going to ask the LLM some questions about that file. Now, there are all sorts of permutations and variations on this particular theme. Um, right in this particular case, I'm just doing a super simple thing where I'm literally ingesting the whole of the file context into the LLM. But I could do this with a, say, RAG pipeline, or I could use other combinations of things. There's, you know, it, it really depends. But in this particular case, I'm just keeping it kind of simple and to the point. OK, so let's break it down a little bit and see what we're actually doing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and blow up Langflow a little bit here. OK, and for those of you not familiar with Langflow, Langflow is a visual IDE that allows you to build generative AI and agentic workflows in a drag and drop low code, no code fashion. Um, if I turn these components back on here, you can see there's all sorts of like inputs and outputs. There's totally model agnostic. It's same thing with vector stores. I can just drag components in and work directly with them. It makes it super nice when I am trying to say build an application. And I want to be able to quickly iterate, test and experiment and eventually publish my, you know, my agentic flows and everything. I can do that right here in Linkflow. OK, great. So what I want to do is I'm just going to go through the simple case here directly in the UI first, and then we're going to do it with the file API over off to the left in a moment. So let's say that I want to ask a question of a particular document. Um, you'll see I have this file component here. I can just select a file. I'm just going to pick, pull this fake resume that I have. Great. It's uploaded it. It's chosen that. And now I'm going to select it. So now when I come in here and let's say that I ask a question, um, what are the top three qualifications, or if I spell that correctly, qualifications, right? Okay. And then I'm just going to very simply, I'm just combining these in the context of my prompt. I'm sending that into the input of my LLM and I'll open this one up to like that and go, right? So now it's going to both ingest the file, ask the LLM, uh, the question based off that file. And if I look in the playground, you can see it's reading from this resume doc right? And it's pulled out the, the top three qualifications, right? I could ask all sorts of things about the content um, that is here in the document. All right, so I'm just going to remove that. So that's basically the simple, you know, the basic premise here. Now I'm just going to, not that I really need to do this, I'm just going to kind of clear everything out, right? I don't want that file. As a matter of fact, I don't even want it here. I'm going to clear, clear our plate, our palette, if you will. <laughs> okay, great. So now I have the same basic flow and I want to do the same thing I just did, but using the file API, because I'm looking at this from the perspective of my application, not just not in a lengthful UI. I want to hook that, hook this up to an application and I want to be able to do the same thing. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to move that over a little bit. I want to make sure everything fits. So I'm going to, woo. okay, great. Now, again, like I said, the app on the left is just a utility a utility app, right? It's just here to help me put all the pieces together and then it gives you some nice sample code and everything that you can use to get going like really fast. All right, so let's go ahead and start filling out some of the fields that we have. Um, you'll see I need a host. It does default to localhost, but in this case, I am using a deployed version of my Langflow. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that. I'm going to pop that in there. And you'll notice as I'm filling out fields here, this is dynamically going to start updating the API endpoints and the sample code and everything to match the data that we have. Now, notice I've got this flow ID. This could actually be that numeric ID of the flow, or in this case, I do like to use that endpoint name because it's just easier to work with. So I'm just going to grab that. I'm going to pop that in there so you could use those interchangeably. And then we have the file component names. I need to just pop in the easiest way I find to get the component names is if you click on the component, go to controls, and there it is. So what we're telling it in this case, and you'll see this again 
as I enter stuff, bam, you see this, this example um, payload is starting to update, right? So when you, in your application, when you go to tweak the value, the, the path um, of this file component, right? That's why you need the ID of the component because you're actually gonna run the flow. You're gonna run the flow with its API and you gotta tell it, hey, which component is the one that I'm tweaking this path parameter for? And that is the one that we just pulled the ID from, okay? Okay, great. Now the text input will just simply enough be fed right into chat input, right? And that's default behavior. So when you look at the API or the, you know, when you when you see the payload, um, here, I'm just gonna put that same one in there. Um, when you take a look at the payload that is being constructed, you'll see this input value. By default, when you're using a Langflow flow and you have a chat input, that input value is actually being funneled into that chat input. That's why I'm not having to like tweak anything or whatever. I just give it the input value and that'll that'll pass right along. All right, and then finally here, I want to choose a file that's gonna be that resume file, okay? And then I'm gonna do something here real quick. Um, I'm gonna purposely fail this. What I mean by that is, Notice here when I tried to submit this, there's something missing. Now, I want to point out that the API key is in fact optional, um, but it just so happens that I am using a deployed version of Langflow that has the security settings enabled. So I do in fact need an API key. Now, if I wanted to get that API key, if I come up here to my user settings and go to Langflow API keys, I would just generate one, right? But I've already got one for this purpose, so I'm not going to do that, but that's exactly what you would need there, right, in that particular case. Okay, so let's go ahead and this one, I'm gonna turn this off and make it pretty. Okay, good. All right, so what I'm gonna do then is I am gonna go get my key. There we go. And then I'm gonna put this in here. And again, notice what happened is that in the example code, right, it actually added this x-api-key header, which is required if you have a secure link flow like I do, right? So if I go ahead and submit that now, ah, we can see that it's actually chunking on whatever whatever I gave it over here, right? It's it's working on it for sure. And then while it's doing that, you'll see here I have this input. What are the top three qualifications? Ah, I just got my response, right? So it both ingested, it uploaded the file. This code is uploading the file, and then it is going to process it like you saw me do uh, in the UI. And you can see I got this response here uh, is giving me those qualifications. But this is being done at the application level. Now, if we come back over here to our Langflow flow, You'll see now, if I select here, you'll see that that shows up, right? So we just uploaded this file from the file upload API with the application, and then it processed that, you know, just like we did when we did it through the UI, um, but just doing it directly uh, with code. Now, one thing I'd like to point out down here in the bottom of this example code, um, I do have Node.js, uh, Python, and a curl option here. These are runnable. Um, you can just take these out and run them. Matter of fact, let's let's do it for real, right? I'm just gonna go ahead and grab that. Do I have my warp over here? I do, yay. All right, let's go ahead and just clear that out. And I'm gonna vim test node. I'm gonna wipe out what I had there before. I'm gonna just pop that in, right? So this is exactly the code. Let's see if this works. And, okay, good sign, right? I can tell right away, because usually it fails. If it's gonna fail, it's gonna fail like that. I I had my key and everything in there, right? So it should be good. So it takes just a second. So it will, this this code here um, is expecting, by the way, um, the, the examples that I have here are expecting that whatever file is gonna be here local from your file system. Um, and that's fine. In your application, like what I'm doing here, uh, if, you're, if you're hooked up to a web app or something like that, you know, the you're not going to be reading from that same local file. It might be a temporary file on a location or something. That's something you'll have to determine with your own app. Um, but this code should definitely get you there. Okay, great. So now you can see the response came out, right? Same thing. If I come back over here to the UI, I'll have two of these, right? Because I just uploaded another one, right? Um, now, one thing I would like to point out, uh, you may notice you're like, well, wait a minute, man. I don't want to have to upload a file every single time if it's the same file over and over and over when I want to have a conversation with it. And you're absolutely right. You don't need to do that. Um, in this case, the, the, the example code I have set up, um, it is set to just upload and then execute. But in your application, all you need is that path. So once you have one file and you have that path, to that one file, you can just keep calling that over and over. It This will persist, persists not only in the flow, but across all of your flows. It's persisting in Langflow for you to use however you want, right? So once you've uploaded it one time, you don't need to keep re-uploading it. And with that, everybody, 
If you like our content, please like and subscribe, share it with your friends. And as always, happy coding. Take care.